Hi everyone, welcome back. Welcome to Norfolk on a beautiful sunny day. Well, not quite as sunny as you'd like. Anyway, today's video, not about sunshine, not about the Mini Electric. I'm gonna be talking about the My Energy Zappy. I've had it since September, 2018. It's time to talk about how it's fared in its condition, the physical side and how well it's working still. Two and a half, coming up three years this September later. Is it still okay? So I purchased the 5 meter Type 2 tethered cable with the Zappy 1. At the time it was a very early product, you couldn't get the untethered version. Uh, and I went for the smaller cable simply so that it would be a little bit less uh, conspicuous uh, wrapped around the casing. I wanted to hide it as much as possible. And so far that's worked well. I've been able to park the car in forwards and in reverse and uh, charge the car on both sides using the 5 meter cable. But on a couple of occasions when I haven't quite parked in the right position, yeah, another meter or so would have been really handy. So uh, I guess you pays your money, you takes your chance with cable length. It really doesn't seem that long ago that I was in Lincolnshire talking to Jordan, asking her how the Zappy would weather on the outside of the house in full sunlight. Would the casing fade? Would the screen still be viewable? Especially that, you know, in direct sunlight and in bad weather conditions, would I still be able to see what was on the screen? And she assured me it was backlit, it was using an LCD or LED, whichever it is, that uh, is very good in sunlight. And that has proved to be true. You know, the only problem I've had sometimes is trying to take a picture of the screen in direct sunlight. Sometimes you get a little bit of reflection from the glass, but other than that, you can see see exactly what's going on in all weather conditions and so far it stood up to frost snow hail rain and uh, a lot of sunshine beating directly onto it because we're south facing our solar panels are facing in a really good position the only physical concern I had with the unit was the cable started to slip and I think that was an installation issue that the bolt on the inside wasn't secured as tightly as it could be so the cable that you can see there with the uh, red bit of insulation tape on that was slipping down so when I refitted it and retightened it up I put that piece of tape there just to measure the height and check whether it was slipping down any further and lo and behold another year or 18 months later it hasn't moved so it's all good. So even though the cable has been dragged across the floor quite a few times, um, across our gravel driveway, and wound and unwound um, pretty much every other day sort of thing, uh, it's lasted really, really well. The cable itself seems fine, and the connectors have remained solid. The connector on the end of the cable, that seems to be working fine. I've got no problems charging either my Kona Electric or the Mini Electric, and the pins, they all seem fine. It seems to be wearing quite well. The grey plastic part of the casing, that seems to be ageing really, really well and uh, in fact looks just the same as it was when it was new. But the white front cover that says Zappy on it, that's not ageing so well. It is starting to yellow slightly. So it's in my mind that, you know, should I clean that up and then spray paint it to match the colour of my garage door or something like that? Or should I buy a new one from my energy? Um, it's just not looking as good as it could perhaps. The worst problem we've had is with the grey front cover. So underneath the white panel there's a grey panel and uh, that has uh, had a failed seal which has let some water in and then that's caused some problems behind. Now my energy agreed that that was under warranty and they've sent out replacements to quite a few customers that, ex that have experienced that with the very first early batches of the Zeppi 1. I think you can see it a little bit clearer here once I've taken the white panel off. So as I said, my energy replaced that under warranty. They sent me out a nice brand new panel, which has got a better seal behind it. And if you're wondering what was involved in changing the panel, here we go. Just unscrew the one screw to take the front white panel off, and then you've got quite a few um, screws around the outside that need undoing to get the grey panel off. As you can see, I used the electric drill rather than the manual screwdriver. Um, they were very easy to get off, but uh, I just took the quickest, easiest route. And just before I exposed the inside of the machine, I thought it best to uh, turn the power off, just to be safe. Once the panel was actually off, I was quite impressed. There was very little dust, very little debris, um, hardly any little bugs or anything that had got in there. I think there was one cheesy bug, if that's what they're called, uh, <laughs> that was actually on the inside. But other than that, it still looked really good. The worst thing I could see was on the screen itself, there's a little bit of marking, and I'm not sure whether that's from the damage on that grey panel that has transferred onto the screen. 
So before offering up the new uh, front panel, I cleaned around the outside, just brushed it and then cleaned it up with a uh, damp cloth and uh, fitted the panel straight back on. That was nice and easy, not very difficult at all. And uh, just put the screws in loosely before, yep, electric drill again on a very low torque setting so I didn't ruin anything and just uh, sealed it back up again. And then finally put the white panel back on. Now this should be easy, there's just two oblong holes to clip it into and one screw to screw in. But as you can see here, I made a bit of a fist of this. It really was easy, but uh, I make it look hard. Not sure how well this comes out on camera, but uh, looking at it sideways on, I could still see where the grey panel was fitting against the unit, that there was a little bit of gap. So uh, I applied a little bit of clear silicon just to seal that gap up completely and make sure that there was no water ingress. The seal on the panel, you could definitely see that that was uh, more substantial this time around, so I'm sure it would have been okay, but I'm just making sure. And the finished result is pretty impressive. It looks new again. The screen is really clear. In fact, I can't even see those marks on that glass screen there. The front panel seems to be covering that up nicely. It does look like new again. And I'm quite surprised, but even this white front panel, which I said right at the beginning, has yellowed a little bit by the time I cleaned it. It's not looking as bad as I thought. It still does look pretty good for a couple of years old. Maybe I won't be painting it after all. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found it useful. If you're thinking of buying a new Zappi 2, this will probably give you a good idea that the original Zappi 1 wasn't quite perfect, but they have improved them, and uh, I think they're wearing extremely well. So I wouldn't be concerned about mounting a new Zappi 2 outside. I think they're definitely designed well for it, and they will last and stand the test of time in all sorts of weathers. And don't forget to give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel. Click that bell as well for notifications of new videos as I upload them. More videos for Kona Electric, Mini Electric, EVs generally, solar panels, home storage, batteries and all sorts of great stuff. See you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.